Do you remember Picard season one? I thought I'd actually blocked that traumatic memory out of my mind, but it turns out there's still bits of it in there, and I only ever watched it once. You could have helped us, Picard. How? I didn't have any ships. Liar! Fuck off, Rafi! JL, just admit that every bad thing that's ever happened is your fault! No! No! Constant arguments, F-bombs, decapitations, murder and gory scenes, suggestions of brother-sister incest, shitty science, bastardization of the Federation, and a bleak dystopian outlook. Now that's the 90s Star Trek that I remember. There was something about an advanced AI trying to destroy all life in the universe. Picard dies and then gets his consciousness uploaded to an android body. What was all that about? And then, of course, there was season two. I only watched the first episode. I observed bits of the rest of the season through clips and rather scathing reviews from other content creators and critics. Of course, both seasons were woke. I mean, we are post-2015 now, so everything coming out of Hollywood has to be woke, don't you know? But now they're giving us season three of Picard, and they're finally doing what they should have done from the start, which is, you know, making it a proper Next Generation spin-off by including the Next Generation cast. But the problem is, the damage is done. It's just too little too late. There's way too much water under the bridge. Too many crap stories, continuity breaks, logical inconsistencies, bad writing, awful and unlikable characters. And yeah, Picard has a synthetic body. How do you get past stuff like that? What is genuinely quite impressive, however, and this is to their credit, they have succeeded in doing the seemingly impossible. They've piqued the interest of some longtime fans with the fact that season 3 reunites the Next Generation cast and will even tie in Voyager and DS9 stories, apparently. Plus, we're going to get the Enterprise F, although the Enterprise E apparently does not appear. Now, from the trailers and a recently released clip, it looks very much like the first two seasons in terms of tone and certainly the visual style. You know, the same visual design aesthetic or lack thereof, the dark lighting, the gritty unpleasant look that has become characteristic of modern secret hideout Star Trek. The show just looks like Star Trek Discovery, but with the TNG cast this time. A lot of people are putting their faith in the fact that Terry Metalis has taken over fully as showrunner for this season, and Alex Kurtzman apparently has more of a backseat role. But I'm not seeing anything especially unique, interesting, new, or even mildly intriguing here. So they brought back lore. I mean, big deal. Brent Spiner has been squeezed into the show through fairly contrived means for the first two seasons, so it was hardly shocking that he would return once again as the one remaining Soong android. Moriarty's inclusion, I think, is extremely left field, and just feels like the thinking was, what were some of the great memorable TNG villains? I know, let's throw the hologram Moriarty into the mix. He was popular. It just feels very contrived and unnecessary. Now, the CGI space battles also look a bit on the cheap side. As I've said before, the visual effects from the Orville look way better than this. The space shots for Picard Season 3 look like something from a decent fan film. And that's really the feel I get from the trailer. It sort of reminds me of that Star Trek fan film, Star Trek Renegades, that Tim Russ and several other Star Trek alumni were involved in several years ago. And then, unfortunately, the Star Trek fan film guidelines came in, so for the sequel, they had to remove all of the references to Star Trek from the script. They changed it to just Renegades, and all the Star Trek references and character names were changed so that it was no longer associated with the Star Trek franchise anymore. But anyway, that first Renegades film actually had some potential, and it looked and felt sort of similar to this. But while Renegades was a commendable, independent production, Star Trek Picard Season 3 is officially licensed Star Trek with a massive budget, and it doesn't make much more of an impact than a well-produced fan film. Up until the disastrous fan film guidelines that effectively ended many popular Star Trek fan film projects, if you wanted some decent and new Star Trek, fan films were the way to go. Star Trek continues, 
also unfortunately ended not long after the fan film guidelines were introduced. That was a very impressive series, and it perfectly recreated the lighting, cinematography, set design, and tone of the original series. And as I've mentioned before, there's even been a few very clever and talented filmmakers who've managed to make very good Trek fan films despite the guidelines, like Gary O'Brien. He's the director of two Trek fan films, Chance Encounter and The Holy Core, well worth watching. But my point is, modern Trek has never felt true to the optimistic spirit of Roddenberry's creation, and so some fans have taken it upon themselves to make their own fitting tributes to the sci-fi franchise they love so much. But these days, official modern Star Trek has sought to subvert fan expectations to such a degree that the franchise is just unrecognisable now. They gave us two seasons of Picard that long-time fans, generally speaking, didn't really like all that much. They gave us uninteresting and bland stories with situations and characters that no fan would ever have wanted to see. Now, finally, when they are at last giving fans the return of the TNG cast they wanted, it's still largely delivered in the same dull, serialised, dark, edgy, modern Trek format. And I guarantee you, it'll probably take half the season in order for the plot to finally begin to unfold. Just like the first two seasons. The story will probably be very slow to get going. My biggest issue with these season-long serialized story arcs is that no individual episode ever feels all that satisfying. You can't really watch one episode in isolation because the story isn't self-contained. With the exception of some of Enterprise and DS9, most of Star Trek was based around the standalone episodic format. But with the rise of streaming services and especially binge-watching culture, every episode has to end on a cliffhanger now and the audience has to be hooked in on some kind of mystery that unfolds slowly over several weeks. So now new TV series are produced with a view to being serialized story arcs. The issue with this is it gets old after a season or two especially if the story isn't absolutely amazing, because it ultimately just frustrates audiences. But I personally think that it's actually incredibly lazy and unimaginative, because in reality, all they're doing with modern Trek series, Discovery and Picard, is taking fairly derivative and bland stories that could be wrapped up in two or three episodes, and instead they're stretching them out across ten episodes. Now, I will say, of course, at least Star Trek Strange New Worlds is mostly standalone in its format. Unfortunately, the show just isn't really very good. Finally, Star Trek Picard Season 3 may very well be an improvement over the first two seasons, and there will probably be a few fan service moments, some member berries, nostalgia baiting, that sort of thing, but it won't undo the damage the first two seasons did. And Picard will still have a synthetic android body. So, there's that. Too little, too late. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Be sure to comment below, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Please hit that like button and all that other good stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.